Thanks for joining. Why don't you introduce them? Sure. Well, I was, I may guess who's here. Um, we have Dr. Sabon Kumar Singh. Thank you. A heroic journey. Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, Megan, how did this project begin? How did you start this journey? Well, um, I like to make films in this verite style, and so as a filmmaker, I'm always on the lookout for compelling individuals going through once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. So, uh, Pinky definitely fit that bill. Um, and then also I'm drawn to international stories and stories of social change, and especially stories that are an opportunity to show someone making a positive impact in our world. And Dr. Sabot and his work surely did that. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, yes, <laughs> never want to cut off applause for Dr. Sabot. <laughs> I, um, I got to know the work, I got to know Dr. Sabot and his work through a terrific organization called the Smile Train, which supports hospitals just like Dr. Sabot's all around the world. And um, they actually came to me with the idea of making a film. And then we started talking about all of the different places all around the world where they, where they work. And as soon as I had one conversation with Dr. Sabot, I knew I had found where I wanted to go. Um, just in our first, you know, early, early morning for me, late night for you conversations, there was just a special rhythm um, and a special sense of mission to what he did that um, I was very attracted to. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came to start working with these children? I grew up in Varanasi, and I grew up seeing so many children with cleft. And uh, I did my master's in surgery and plastic surgery there itself. So a lot, lot of those patients were of cleft. So I always thought that I will be doing uh, surgeries for these children. Then I started my practice. I had a good practice doing aesthetics and everything. But then a lot, lot of children were coming with the cleft of the lip, and many of them could not afford it. So I used to organize camps in my hospital where they will be operated free. Then I came to know about this organization called Smile Train. And then they started a center in my hospital, and then after that we never looked back. And now we do about 3,760 surgeries. I mean, last year we did that many surgeries, and uh, we have done more than 13,000 now. And more and more children uh, keep pouring in my hospital and uh, this is this is something that I love to do all the time I only wish that I had more time in a day like, say 36 hours or so so that I could <laughs> operate these children and and this gives a lot of pleasure to me this gives a meaning to my life this gives meaning to what I do and I really love it well thank you for sharing it with us it's really special to have you here um, want to take some questions from the audience do we have some questions here? It's such a touching story. In the back, get us started. Um, it's not really a question, but I'd like someone to translate my comment and, uh, you know, uh, to Mr. Chauhan. Um, I think one of the most beautiful things in the film is the relationship between him, his wife, his daughter, and the family. So if somebody could translate for him, please. इनको ये बहुत बहुत अच्छी लगी कि तुम्हारे परिवार में कितना अच्छा संबंध है तुम्हारे तुम्हारे बच्चे के बीच में तुम्हारी पत्नी के बीच में तुम इसको प्यार कर रहे हो वो उनको बहुत ही अच्छा लगा है थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दैट कमेंट नो हाउ मेनी चिल्ड्रन शी सॉ बिफोर डिसाइडिंग थिंकिंग एन यंग मैन so I worked with a terrific field producer named Nandini Rajwadi, and she went out with uh, one of the social workers who you see in the film, actually, um, ahead of time, before we arrived with the crew who was already on the meter, and you know, every minute's very expensive. Um, and, and they did something I don't normally do in documentary, but we, we wanted to find a way to find our main characters, but then also be there for the first moment that they were finding out about this opportunity. So Nandini and Ravi went around and in the pouring rain and everything to find out where there were likely some of these children because even though there are you know, a million backlog, 
India is a huge country, so it, it is, takes a ton of work to find them. So they were, um, went under a little bit under the guise of just being health researchers, not specifically cleft, but public health researchers, and found out where there were some likely children and talked to those children and their families and also other children in those same villages. Um, but took pictures and gave me their impressions. And Nandini must have sent 10 different children and a photograph of Pinky and her talking about that same specialness um, of, of a relationship between Pinky and her father um, made Pinky stand out right away. And I mean, within moments of filming, I was like, whew, right choice, you know? So um, I was drawn in right away. And, and Gutru, I felt the same way. I loved, uh, he's the little boy in the film, but I love the intensity um, of his mother's, you know, protectivism and that, you know, sure, you know, maybe there's something wrong with him. He's my son. I love him. You must convince me this is the right thing. Um, but we also filmed with a third character who was a baby. You just see the parents in the hospital talking about someone said it looked like a monster when they were born. And just it was a little, you know, babies don't talk. They don't have as much to contribute as Pinky could to the film. So, so we ended up going with two characters instead of three. Down here in front. I don't know. I don't. I, in Vietnam. In Vietnam. Oh, okay. Yeah, there are there are lots of different organizations um, that do cleft work. One of the things that's unique about what Dr. Sabod does and the Smile Chain is that rather than sending American doctors abroad, which is wonderful too, but instead they support doctors, local doctors in the countries all around the and the world, and just give them the financial support and, if need be, additional training. Um, to do that work. And so what I loved seeing is, I mean, obviously this hospital is fixing thousands of clefts, but there's a whole wonderful trickle down that happens for the health sector and people coming into your hospital and being training and, and getting training and then going off to do medicine in different... Okay. <laughs> ऐसे फिल्म में बने अच्छा लगा था तो मजा आया था she says she is enjoying it yeah. I did not realize that smiletrain.org I've been donating to that organization for the last five years I did not know that uh, the money was being used to go overseas to, I thought it was mainly in North America a lot of the poor disadvantaged kids but I think more people need to find out about smiletrain because I know the expense to do one of these is very little. It doesn't take much to help a child. I think this needs to be brought to focus. Smiletrain.org and donate. And more money needs to go to this charity because I know most of the money goes to help help the children and not that much to administration. Actually, uh, actually, uh, Smiletrain is working in 76 countries and they have more than 1,000 centers. And in India alone, they have 160 centers. And they have done about 400,000 surgeries so far. And this year, they will be doing 500,000 surgery. And this, all, all the money, as you said, goes for the treatment. And nothing goes on a, uh, overhead expenses. And, the, and it really takes a small amount of money to treat these children because we are committed. We don't want any money for, for, it, for it. So we are committed. All the money goes for the medicines and other expenses. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are about, uh, there are millions of children waiting for this surgery in, de in resource limited world. And, and show money will definitely help them. Yeah, she's asking, do you, know, do you have any information that it is a nutritional um, deficit which causes this? The answer is yes and no. Uh, there are multiple factors. There are 350 genes and loci known on you know, 45 chromosomes uh, which can be responsible for it, which has, been, which has been associated with it. And there are many environmental factors. But these genetic factors and, and environmental factors together make a threshold when this cleft occurs. So we are still um, a long way to go before we will able to find out what actually causes it. But we are also doing a big genetic research, and we have found some genes in our population which are strongly associated with this, including MTHFR and RF6 genes. And MTHFR in our population is 
associated and this regulates homocysteine and folic acid metabolism. So it can be associated and there can be many other nutritional factors which can be associated. Because we see in our population and especially the population which is nutritionally deficient, it occurs more than, this is, is my observation. Yes. Thank you. Do you want to respond to that or talk about the Thank experience you. of being in? Uh, well, I don't want to repeat my own compliment, but he, he was just saying that um, what, uh, but let me, why not? <laughs> um, it's your week. He was saying it was masterful when I, no, uh, <laughs> that, that the fact that our film is character driven and focuses so closely on on Pinky and her father and um, that you feel like you're in the village and you're going through the struggle with them. Um, that is sort of, those are the kinds of films I love, so those are the kinds of films I like to make. Um, I just want to get as close to a person as I possibly can and um, have you all right there along for the ride as well. So, um, but you know, it was, um, I mean, like Irene was saying earlier, I mean, there, there were obviously huge language barriers. I don't speak, I mean, unlike their, with their Nepali, I don't speak a word of Hindi. Well, I've learned like five words of Hindi now, but, um, and then these guys even speak a dialect. So I was really relying on Nandini, my field producer, and then Pankaji, who's the terrific social worker who goes out to Pinky's village to not just do the literal translation, but also help with the cultural translation and the huge chasm of my being a foreigner, you know, just with, from New York with no connection to their reality. And there was a moment when, um, when Rajendra's wife, Pinky's mom, was asking Nandin to, to explain to her the concept of me being a foreigner. Like that really, she didn't understand. She, she knew she could recognize Hindi. She understood people being from the city, but my being from far away. So that was, there were a lot of you know, leaps to take, but it was really important to me that they understood why we wanted to tell their story, that we weren't just taking, I mean, we were, we were taking and they needed to trust us and everything, but that we were going to be giving this back, not just to them, but to other children around the world with this problem. So. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We're very thank honored you. to have you here on behalf of the IDA and the documentary community. Thank you to the thank IDA. Thank you very much. <laughs> A wonderful film. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Well, namaste. We'll be around. Thank you. And they'll be here in the lobby in between films. So thank you once again. Thank you so much. You're welcome.